let's talk today about some of my favorite hats, um, my favorite hat models, and um, you know, I'll give you just a little bit of you know, my uh, my taste. And I'll tell you some of the hat models that I really like uh, throughout the years. Um, some classic models that are sort of you know tested, time tested, and true, and uh, never seem to give me any problems. They last really long. That's a big thing. Hats that last long. Um, I have some hats that are 20 years old, 22, 23, you know, really old hats. 10-year-old, uh, 15-year-old, and they're still looking really good. Like this one, you've seen me roll this hat up on many occasions. It's not even a crushable hat. It's not meant to be rolled, you know, but um, it can take it. It's one of those things. Um, the hemp asher, you know. Um, this is, the Asher is just a hat that's really well designed, everything about it. The thing about this is, up until the Asher, all of the short brim hats had the same exact recipe. Um, you know, I'll show you, kind of like, like this one. Every small brim hat that came in always was like this, wide ribbon, welted edge. It had like a welt, you know, like one of these edges, over welt or an under welt, wide ribbon, center crease. Everything, like the Stetson Saxon, the Stetson Selby, things like that. Um, and whenever we'd get in a small brim hat, except for pork pies, that, that might be the one exception, they would always have the same, you know, like a really wide bands, I don't know what this is, like three fingers or something, and uh, center crease, welted edge. It's just uh, a traditional thing, and every single hat that came in was like that. Um, it's got to be a, a traditional thing, I'm, I'm sure that's what it is, it's tradition. Um, just like fenders have like six in line headstock and a Gibson has three on one side and three on the other side. It's tradition. People want to see it. Um, they want you to stick to the classic recipe and that's the way it's always been. Then the Asher came out. The Asher had a narrow band, a teardrop, and binding, thin binding edge. So it's like a you know really thin, like a one and a half finger, low crown, with a teardrop and binding. So they came out with a short brim that's stylish, with some style, you know, it's it's mod, it's young looking, it's, you know, it's not just the vintage uh, Blues Brothers hat that you see, you know, every single vintage hat, you know, in every thrift store looks like. It's not, it's not this. Um, so the Asher to me is a really, it's a groundbreaking hat. It's uh, it's just fantastic. I feel that this is one of the uh, the best designed hats in the you know in the last twenty years that's come out. Really, really nice, and I'm I'm really f for it. I like the uh, felt version even more, and I love my hemp version. Uh, it's lightweight. It's got a leather sweatband. Uh, it's got a tip sticky here to keep you from sweating through the top. And, uh, which is better than an actual lining. You know, a lining would be just too hot in a summer hat, you know? You do a tip sticker and a leather sweatband, which is basically the parts where it touches your head, you know, here makes contact, and here, and that's it. So they take care of that, and the rest is all breathable. Um, it's well designed. Now, um, having a light band here is the light color is a little bit, you know, it's like a fashion choice. Generally, a dark band is what you see in most hats because if you do sweat through there, that's the part that makes contact with your head. The, the dark bands hide the sweat stains a little better, but, you know, that's hard to say. Sometimes this, the sweat stains can be salt-based and you can see the salt even better on a black. So I don't think that's a big, big issue, but um, it's well-designed and, and I love it. Um, getting back to other hats that I think are fantastically designed, this one. This is a Borsalino hat called the Antonio. 
Antonio's are actually coming back this year. This is their, their highest level of uh, felt that they make called Quality Superiore. So the, the Quality Superior felt is their highest series. You can order custom from Borsellino this hat in like five different qualities. Um, you know, they go down the Augusta line, the, you know, whatever. There's all different lines and uh, each one is a little bit lower. Now, um, when you see quality superior, it's going to be right in the lining, the very top of the lining, the highest thing, and it says right in the, the roof of the crown. It's going to say very, very small, quality superior. That's their best. Um, all of the quality superior Borsellinos are going to last you. Um, they're, they're all good, but this particular hat has seemed to last me, you know, I just, I wreck it. I just, I don't take care of it. I'm constantly like, you know, pork pieing it for people online, you know, and rolling it up and stuff. And um, it actually makes a really good pork pie, you know, it's, it's just got a good baggy shaped crown. You could do, uh, you know, teardrops and stuff. You know. But I think it's a combination of the great felt with a short brim, which is just less trouble. Short brims tend to just go out of whack a lot less than bigger brims. Bigger brims, it's just more of it to, to lose the shape. So the combination of the short brim, the welted edge seems to help. Um, as far as bound edges and raw edges, I don't think there's any difference. Bound, binding and uh, will not add any strength to your hat. Um, it's basically the same strength as a raw edge, but when you do this, a welted edge, essentially you're folding it over and hemming it, and kind of folding it over and stitching it onto itself. So the edge is double thick. So it gives the edge a little bit of thickness and stability so that you can keep a little sharper edge. Um, so yes, welted edges do help. Um, a lot of people think they look old fashioned. You know, it's kind of like the old vintage look or the old man look or something like that. I think it looks awesome. Um, raw edges are a little bit more trouble, troublesome and uh, they look more modern to me. Um, the thing is a lot of people start off with the cheaper hats like uh, uh, light felt crushables and the crushable light felt wool hats all have a welted edge so when they break into the more expensive hats like you know Stetson and Temple, Stetson and Whippet and you know more expensive $200 stuff and they get out of the, the light felt crushables they don't want another welted edge because it's like that's what they always had they want a raw edge because that looks more expensive it's like ah oh, I want one of those you know that raw edge like that real deal expensive thing but yeah, raw edge is always going to be a little bit floppier, um, with some exceptions. I think when you get to Borsellino, a superior quality, it's just the quality is so good it almost doesn't matter. It just maxes out. But um, I do feel that a welt will add a little bit of stability. It gives it just a little weight and thickness on the edge. Um, for some reason, these Antonios have just lasted me forever. They're my oldest hats. I've got them like 22, 23 years. Um, some of my first hats I got. And um, I have, I think, a beige one, a gray one, and maybe a taupe one. Um, yeah, they just seem to last and last. So the Borsellino Antonio is definitely one of my favorite hats. I love it. I think it's incredible. Um, let's talk a Kubra. Kubra from Australia is impeccable. Everything they make is just fantastic. Um, you could buy anything from them, the Cattlemen, the Snowy River, the Style Master, uh, the Kubra PD, Kubra uh, Petty, I guess it's, you know, anything. It's, uh, they're all fantastic. Um, they have the one with the little opal in it. I think that's the Kubra Petty. That one is fantastic. It's got like a Barramundi fish band, a fish skin band, like a leather, and a little tiny opal. Um, I think Cooper Petty is the place where they find opals. It's like the world's source of opals, you know, in Australia. And the Banjo Patterson, all of those hats are fantastic. Uh, the Riverina, the Bushman, um, all of them, they're, they're fantastic. And I recommend them wholeheartedly. 
the Style Master might be one of the only fedora type hats that I wholeheartedly recommend wearing in the rain. Um, you can wear Akubras in the rain, where most fedoras, it's a gamble. Most of the time they're going to lose their shape, they can curl, they... So, you know, if you get caught in the rain with a fedora, this is what you do, okay? You get caught in the rain, first thing you do, you go home is you flip your brim up, okay? And you invert it, okay? And then you also want to straighten your brim out to the best as you can. It's going to dry the way you leave it. So you can go around, get your hat as straight as possible, okay? And then the crown, again, if you dry it like this, pinched, that's going to be your permanent shape. So what I like to do after the rain is I open it up and then I just, I crease it again. I bring it back to its original form. You just very gently feel for it. Your pinches and your center crease are there. They're blocked in, so they're not going anywhere. Get the crown correct the way it should look. Brim up and as unwavy as possible. Store it upside down and keep it away from heat. That means a hot room too. If you just have a room that, you know, it's not really room temperature, it's pretty hot in there, that's enough, that's no good. It's gonna uh, shrink your leather bands, you know, things can start to shrink and it'll dry a little bit tight. Plus, it won't look good, it just will look a little bad. You know? So keep it in a room temperature room. If it's winter, Put it in, uh, you know, the bathroom or the kitchen or somewhere, and crack the window open so you got a little breeze, so that the heat from your house isn't baking your hat as it dries. Um, it has to be room temperature, true room temperature, or cool. It could be cool or cold even, but uh, you don't want it to be hot. Um, it's like throwing your hat in the dryer, basically. Um, the Stetson Temple is a hat that can be a little hot cold. It's, um, it's not a great hat for heavy rains because it has a raw edge, a big brim, and soft felt, kind of thin felt. But, um, the Stetson Temple is definitely one of my favorites. Um, I just can't deny it. It's one of the most classic hats pretty much ever designed. It's just, um, it looks amazing in all the colors. In gray, you know, it's film noir. In brown, it's kind of a little bit Indiana Jones. You pop the back down, it's Indiana Jones. You pop the back up, it's kind of more of a fedora. Um, it comes in every color of the rainbow. It comes in blue, beige, comes in a, like an off-white color called, I think, light gray, midnight blue, black, um, just tons of colors. Olive green, they call it sage, I believe, and um, every color seems to be a winner, too. They all sell out and they all do really well. I love the Stetson Temple, mostly because I feel like it's a... Um, it's a good design. It's classical. It has like, not a high crown, but it's just an, a bold, well-sculpted crown. It has the crown that I like. It's very similar to the crown on my green hat that I wear all the time. Um, with the raw edge, the big brim, there is a chance that this hat might not take very well to moisture. So I would say steam it as little as possible. Try not to steam it at all if, you know, you can. I've never steamed this hat ever, and it's still fine. Um, some hats don't take well to steam, especially if they're thin, raw edge, big brim. Those are hats that sometimes, the raw edge, I'm gonna say not so much. Um, a well, uh, a bound edge will, will curl just the same as a raw edge. Um, 
but the welted edges seem to be stronger. Now, um, I've seen some of these that have curled up from the rain, and I've also seen some um, Stratoliners, not the Premier Stratoliner, the Stratoliner SE, that have also curled up. Anything that's super lightweight, you know, thin, lightweight, soft, you, you're running that risk that it's not a great rain hat. Um, but again, these are not marketed as rain hats. If it's pouring out, it's raining out, uh, snowing, whatever, you know, you buy yourself a rain hat, uh, an American made one is like 75 bucks and uh, you know, something non-American made can be like 25 bucks, 30 bucks. Uh, they're worth it. It's like a poplin, almost a raincoat material. Um, they come fedora shaped. We have one called the Rain Challenger. It's like a fedora. Or they have what's called a Rain Safari, which is a brim down with a thin leather band. It's like your classic rain hat that goes with the rain coat, trench coat kind of thing. We call that the Aberdeen and the Rain Safari. I believe we have two different versions. Get yourself a rain hat for the rain. Um, don't wear these for the rain. They're, they're just not meant for it. Um, although the fabric is fur and it's technically rainproof, they still can lose their shape. Right? So you don't worry about it leaking water. They don't, they don't really leak water, but they can dry a little out, you know, they can they curl a little, you know, things like this, you get wavy brims. So um, if it doesn't really need steaming, don't steam it. I'm gonna say uh, things that have a long brim, raw edge and soft felt, thin felt, they're more prone to curling from steam moisture rain so less is more um, pat it down with the packing tape to clean it you know what I'm saying brush it counterclockwise if you have a brim brush if you don't have a brim brush just get anything a shoe brush a clothing brush it doesn't matter if it's bristly and hard or if it's really soft or anywhere in between um, you could even use a good piece of foam they have these hat sponges if you look at them they're basically just foam like sponge rubber you could just take the sponge you know like that that foam has like a, lots of little bubbles in it like you know like that stuff you just counterclockwise and forget the steam you're not going to need it so again don't overdo the steam with your uh you know hats like this thinner longer brim hats but yeah temple is awesome and if i'm doing the temple i have to talk about the um the Whippet, which is kind of like its sister hat. Um, Stetson's most popular fedoras are the Temple, Santa Cruz, this one, and the Whippet, which is their teardrop. It's teardropped, and it has a binding, bound edge. So it's going to look more nostalgic. Kind of like this recipe, teardrop, binding, but in the wide rim version. So if you're looking for that real film noir kind of hat, 1940s, gangstery looking. Either one of these are going to look good. The Temple or the Whippet. The Whippet is uh, more low. It's kind of like a when you teardrop things, you're lowering it. You're basically bringing it down. So if you take a center crease and you want to lower it, that's what you do. You teardrop it. And you got rid of all this meat in the back here is gone. All that stuff that was up there, I tucked it into itself. So Teardrops like the Whippet are going to look lower. Center creases like the Temple are going to look higher. Um, a really good alternative for a Whippet is the Akubra Style Master from Akubra, A K U B R A, from Australia. Um, not American made, but super, super quality. And I do say they're okay in the rain. The thing about Akubra is they're making dress hats out of thick, rugged western felt. So they have very rugged, rugged felt for the outback, for the elements. And I do suggest, you know, wearing any of those Akubra in rain, snow, and they'll take it, they'll be fine. Um, if you're a vintage purist and you're looking for something really vintage, like with the big baggy crowns, you know, some crowns have more of a, um, more of a taper. They taper to a letter A. Yeah. 
other hats are more straight up. Like the ones that Humphrey Bogart wears in those old pictures, you know, the gangster hats, they're straight up and then they, they're very high. You know what I'm talking about, those old gangster hats where they're really high and straight. Okay, we call that a boxy crown, like a vintage style crown or a boxy crown. Um, they used to make a hat called a Stetsonian, which had the right crown, but it had a bad brim. The brim was just way too big. I guess that's a matter of opinion, but it looked a little zoot sooty, and it never had a good snap because it was just it was just way too big. Um, now we're we're not doing Stetsonians anymore. I don't even know if they still make it, but the best of the best, if you're looking for the vintage purist hat, go with the premier Stratoliner. It's double thick. The felt is really thick. Uh, it comes open crown, just like this, just open and round. So you tell us, you say, um, I'd like to order a premier Stratoliner with a teardrop, and we'll teardrop it for you. We'll send it out, you know, with a nice nostalgic teardrop, or you could just you know, order it round and shape it yourself. Another thing that's common with the Premier Stratoliners is you can do open roads with it. You could do a cattleman crease and make it into a, an open road, basically. So let's say you wanted an open road in a color they don't make. You could get the Premier Stratoliner in like a dark olive or something, or, a, you know, whatever color. Um, dark brown or something. And you could create your own open road. Um, they're a little bit different. It's slightly higher, like, you know, just a tiny bit higher and a little bit shorter in the brim. But again, very like an eighth of an inch. So that's like the LBJ hat. The, the LBJ hat was a, uh, a Stratoliner shaped by himself, not really an open road. So it gives you that, uh, that open road look, but with uh, not Western, hard Western felt. It's with a uh, nice, thick, but soft uh, dress felt. So um, it's a great hat for the vintage purists who are looking for the big, tall, boxy crown. Um, the only thing is it doesn't have a big, wide ribbon. It has a very thin ribbon. Um, but if you look at the old gangster movies, they'll always be like, you know, four gangster thugs in a row. And like one guy has on a white hat with a thin ribbon. All the other guys got the thick red, but there's one guy who's wearing that whitish hat with a very thin, pencil-thin ribbon. That's a Stratoliner. So that's a really cool look to me. But if you're not into the thin ribbon, you can just have the ribbon changed and we'll put a thick vintage ribbon. I know a few of you have already ordered that. That's the real vintage purist hat. It's, um, it's like a Whippet, but it's got the big boxy tall crown which the Whippet does not. The Whippet is slightly modernized. It's got a low enough crown that most people won't look at it and think, whoa, that's too tall. If you're one of those vintage guys who wants to do it exactly like they did it in the old days, you know, get ready for a big, tall crown, you know. It doesn't taper, it goes straight up. And, um, you know, you could always lower it with the teardrop, but still, it's different. It's very vintagey. So the Premier Stratoliner is a totally different hat from the Stratoliner SE or the other Strats. Um, I do recommend the Premier Strat. It's a good, good hat. It's, the felt is like double thick, but it does come open crown. So you have to either shape it yourself or you just tell us at JJ's. And, you know, generally you tick a box. You say, I'd like a center crease or I'd like a teardrop. Or you could call us and say, I want it with a cattleman crease. I want to do it up like an open road, you know, whatever you'd like. I sort of recommend the teardrop over a center crease. A center crease on a premier strat is going to look very high. But, uh, you know, do whatever you like, you know. You could use your own discretion. Those are a few of my favorite hats. Um, I think they're classics, and um, they always will be classics. They'll never go out of style.
Mm-hmm.